Gypsy Rose is officially back to the streets. Clap it up for Gypsy Rose, y'all. Yup, it's TMZ Verified the Podcast. I'm wild. I'm Steph. What up, y'all? Hi, guys. Hello. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. I feel like this is a good Thursday. It really is. Because our prayers have been answered. We're so happy about this. You have no idea. Gypsy Rose is officially back to the streets. Clap it up for Gypsy Rose, y'all. It's just us. It's just us. I'm so excited. We should probably not be clapping about this situation, but Gypsy Rose. No, I'm ha- clapping for her happiness. Okay. Gypsy Rose and her husband, Ryan Anderson, have seemingly separated. We saw her literally in the streets days later. I love this. We're going to tell y'all about that. Also, Drake Bell who has been a topic of conversation just because of the Quiet On Set documentary that came out a few weeks ago. He did an interview with the Not Skinny, Not Fat podcast where he talked about, because remember, when the Quiet On Set doc came out, everybody was like, sir, don't you got some some allegations of your own? Right. Well, he was on the Not Skinny, Not Fat podcast, and he talked about it. We're going to tell you what he said. I have some really strong opinions about this. I mean, I got strong opinions about everything, though. And lastly... We watch SNL. Everybody watches SNL, at least like a little bit. You see the clips online. This TikToker, y'all, she came up. I don't know what what inspired her to wake up and choose violence this day, but she made a video where she basically trashed every person that's in the SNL cast. And she was like, none of y'all are attractive. Like, do they not hire cute people at SNL? (laughs) And well, the worst part is that some of the SNL cast members responded to her being like, excuse me? I love it. I'll tell y'all what happened. All right. But I want to start with our girl, Gypsy Rose. Gypsy is single, Steph. This is crazy. We, first of all, manifested this, obviously, on the show. If you go back. We don't want to say we manifested a breakup. No, listen. I want the the best life for Gypsy. She has really suffered in her life. And, like, I think she deserves to do whatever makes her happy. (laughs) And I think... Clearly, this makes her happy because she's choosing to do this, and I'm happy for her. I think she, like, needs to be, you know, free to do whatever she wants. I think getting into a marriage right away outside of, like, this is my opinion, getting into a marriage directly outside of coming out of jail when you've been in there your whole adolescence, like, you should be alone just for, like, a little bit. Yeah, so Gypsy Rose last week, she announced that her and her, her husband, Ryan Anderson, their post-prison fairy tale wedding— Marriage, I'd say, is coming to an end. Um, there's a lot of like speculation about why Gypsy and Ryan split up, but sources told us that like one of the main reasons why Gypsy was like, I need to get out of this is because Ryan had developed like a weird ass, like jealous tick where he would get a little jealous about her basically spending time anywhere that he wasn't at. So like she would go to her dad's house, which is like not that far from her current crib, and he would have an issue with it. Or, like, she would be hanging out with her sisters, and he would allegedly have an issue with it, according to sources. So, like, she just was feeling, like, <gasps> jail, part two. Right, right, right. That's what I'm saying. I feel like she, since she went through all of that, she deserves to be with the guy that's going to let her be free. hmm I like that, though. I mean, I feel like if you get into a marriage or a relationship and you realize it's not really working out like that, why not be like, yeah, I'm going to leave? Because, one, Gypsy, you ain't getting any younger, and you already lost 10 years of your life, sis, so you kind of... Gotta go now. No, I'm I'm serious. I always believe that like you should, no matter how much you have invested, no matter what goes on, like you should always leave if you feel like it. All right. So the separation with Ryan happened. I think I'm literally dying. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hours later, days later, we saw Gypsy at a tattoo parlor with her ex fiance Ken. Iconic. Iconic. Okay, the only thing that's okay, we saw her at the tattoo parlor with Ken, and immediately we're like, oh, you know, she like, you know, spinning the block. You know how you break up with somebody and then you break up with your current significant other, and you're like, let me go see what so and so is doing. 100%. So she tried to spin the block. She hardcore, she spun the block too damn hard, in my opinion, though. Like, <laughs> you don't get back with your ex and then get a, t- a matching tattoo. That's where, okay, love you so much. I, if she would have called me and said, do you think I should do this? I would have said no. So if you're watching right now on podcast or watching, if you're listening right now on like audio platform, watch us on YouTube. TMZ Verify the Podcast. Look at these magic tattoos, y'all. Look. She should have consulted. And, and you know what? Maybe they, maybe, you know what? I'm not going to judge. 
I think, remember, the tattoo signifies something between her and Kevin. Ken. Ken. And also, what does it signify? They got matching tattoos of a husky. Their bond. Oh, please. That's what they said. Oh. Oh, please, Jesse. Their bond. <laughs> You Listen, gotta bond with everybody. True love, true love prevails. And she really did, like, remember, she mentioned several times in her documentary, I watched it, that she, like, Ken broke her heart. How? Tell me how. I didn't watch the documentary, so tell us. Ken, like, just kind of, like, seemingly, like, just distanced himself in a way when, like, the press got big. Mm, okay. So? so? She went with Ryan, and I, now she back to Ken. I, I okay. If you look, never mind. I can't even say based off looks. I have a question. What? Gypsy Rose allowed to have conjugal visits when she was in the slammer. No. Why not? You know how many people have asked me this, by the way. No, you're not allowed to have sex in jail. Since what? Yes, bo- no, you're not. People be having conjugal visits all the time, Steph. You just made that up. Google right now. Can you have sex in jail? Yes. No. I think you can have. The men and women people. cannot. No, you're making that up. No, I'm not making it up. Conjugal visits in jail. Do you really think that you can come visit your wife in jail and have sex with her? For prisoners in state custody, the availability of conjugal visits is governed by the law of the particular state. There are four states that currently allow conjugal visits. Those states are California, Connecticut, New York, and Washington. So She wasn't there. I was about to say, so, you're kind of right you know what? <laughs> you know what? You're still wrong. Because she didn't live there. So, no, she didn't have sex in jail. All right, so... Where do we stand right now? I think that if I had the past that Gypsy had, and now I was in jail half of like my adult, sorry. If I had the situation that Gypsy had where I'm in jail for half of my adolescence and then I get into a marriage and I'm not happy, I'm immediately leaving because I need to see what's out there. Right. Ken also might not be the one. That's okay. I think she needs to date around. Like she needs to see what it's like and like get her heart broken and like break someone else's heart. That's a part of life. She has a lot of catching up to do. I feel like you need to sleep with at least, not even sleep with, I feel like you need to date at least like five people before you find a good one. And like, she's only two people in. Like, Gyps, and I mean like every, one out of every five people is good is what I'm saying. Like, we've all dated a bunch of people in our lifetime, but we've only ever had, I mean, I don't know about everybody else, but like you only really have like a few really solid relationships, Mm -hmm. but it's like, that's one out of every like four or five people I had to date to get like a good relationship. But think like, about like middle school. Think about like high school when you have a crush and you're going to prom mm-hmm. and like you have a, uh, you know, your first make out at the football game or like what? She didn't have that. So right. she's making up for lost time, marrying right out of prison. Her parents even were like nervous about and I can see why. She needs to experience life and I'm so glad she is. All right. Moving on. Any other thoughts on Gypsy Rose, by yes. the way? Okay, I think that <laughs> she should be living her best life even more than Ken. I think you need to expand. I think you could be a top tier. You know, you did help with, I asked you to do a get ready with, I'm not sure if you're listening to me. I'm, I doubt it. But we said on the podcast, go back, roll the tape, <laughs> that I wanted you to do a get ready with me. You did. So I would like you to be, you know, rolling around either like LA, New York with like a celeb. Pete Davidson, Tyga, um... Something crazy. Just for fun. Okay. Because she can. Gypsy Rose, if you're watching this, come to L.A. We'll take you out. All right. Moving on to... I feel like this story never... Ugh, like, I'm so over it. Like, I just think that if anyone is hurting anybody like why are we doing this and and especially with like I'm just gonna bring it up the P. Diddy thing like so much is coming out right now I'm overwhelmed I'm just like why are people so horrible stop molesting people stop hurting people like are you crimed out what the hell is I'm just like so confused on how like you wake up one day and like yeah mm -hmm, I'm doing this and then you do it and then you just continue living like absolutely turn yourself in I'm, like, over it. Okay. I'm so done. Okay, let me tell you all the story now. <laughs> so, Drake Bell, he is the, obviously, from Drake and Josh, big Nickelodeon actor from back in the day. Uh, Drake was on that Quiet on Set documentary. He recently, this week, did a podcast, did an interview with the Not Skinny, Not Fat podcast, and he detailed the past abuse allegations against him, like, the ones that were levied against him a while ago. And He said, you know, I was incredibly irresponsible and a bunch of other stuff. Let's play a little bit of what Drake said. I responded on some DMs and was incredibly irresponsible and got myself into conversations that I shouldn't have had. And I ended up finding out that, you know, I was talking to someone I shouldn't have been talking to. And 
it snowballed into this these these allegations that were not true and okay if he genuinely did not know how old she was okay I completely understand. I also think we need to take into account here that he was like obviously in a very, how do I say this, like abusive situation as a child. Mm. So it could kind of mess with his brain a little. They say that happens. I don't know. I I can't speak. Mm. But I think that we need to take all of these into account. But what I'm saying is I'm so through with the fact that because that happened to him, like, you know, it it just is like a a trickle effect of like bad things happening. So Drake is basically referencing an incident in 2021 where he pled guilty to a felony charge of attempted child endangerment and a misdemeanor charge of disseminating matter harmful to juveniles. Um, here's my thing. Two things could be true. Like, you could have been a victim of child sexual abuse, but you could also have grown up to be a damn creep. And I don't think that those two things are isolated. Like, I listened to his whole explanation. I listened to the whole interview. I actually went back and watched older Drake Bell, like, clips and interviews of him kind of addressing this situation. And it's like, bruh, I am... There is nothing in the world as a grown-ass man Mm -hmm. that would incite me to go and talk to a child. And, like... Entice. Entice. You know what I meant. Help me out. You know what I mean? But, like, there is nothing in the world that, like, I would be like, I'm gonna talk to a kid. And to be like, I didn't recognize how old this person was is a little, like, the oldest excuse in the goddamn book and i'm not saying that drake knowingly talked to somebody that was underage but that is literally the number one defense that everyone has that gets caught up in these situations you can look at someone we got eyes you can look and see that someone is a teenager Mm -hmm. maybe like 18 19 or ask for an id are we in the Stone Age? Like, I'm just, or just confused. Ask. No, like, because you need to prove. Like, take a picture of her. If she looks young, like, let's say she's 20. 20 year olds can look fucking young. They can, let's yeah, say you, you meet her at a bar. You wild, okay? Right. She's 20. You go, uh, I don't know. You Too look young. really young. Take a picture with your ID. We're not in the Stone Age. This is not Flintstones. You have your phone. You have an ID. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what I'm saying by I'm over it. I'm over, like, the excuses. And I'm just over all these people that are suffering, including him. I'm sad that it happened to right. him. I'm sad that it happened to the girl that he was with. Just stop. Like, all of it. So Drake went on to discuss and basically explain, like, I did have these conversations and I took responsibility for that. And he goes on to say um, he ended up pleading guilty because – uh just financially, he was devastated. He had just had a son. He didn't want to put his family through any of it. Basically, what Drake said is that he pled guilty to those charges to kind of get it over with so that, like, everybody can move on with their life, himself included, the alleged victim included. But it's uh, – I just don't think this is as cut and dry of, like, as he's trying to make it out to see. Like, I feel like Drake Bell is on this thing of, like, well, I didn't really know. And, like, he did emphasize that there was no physical contact, which was one of the allegations that was initially levied against him. And he also emphasized that there was no, like, exchanging of photos or anything like that. And it's like, well, yes, sir, if you read okay, the court but documents. Again, that bare that. minimum. Like, okay, great. Yeah, yeah Ooh, like, Yay! Like, I'm so happy you didn't do that. Like, stop. But like, you still were talking to a child. I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm over it. We're not in the stone. It is 2024, and at that point, it was 2021. And you know what? Even Nickelodeon's time, it was like t- the early 2000s. We had digital cameras. Take a picture of me and my ID. I'm over it. Yeah, in 2021, Drake Bell was a full-grown adult. We like, got to start being more responsible as men and women with, like, our decisions and, and not letting these cracks and holes come in between, like, you know, what the age and what you're doing and your decisions. Come on. You know, seal everything off. Be like, I know she's this age. I know this. I know that. I know I didn't touch her here. Like, I know I didn't touch him there. Okay, just for additional context, I would like to play for y'all a flashback of Drake explaining this incident a few years ago so right after right after all the drama happened and he like played and everything this is him roll the tape roll Roll the the tape tape. roll the tape hi i'm drake bell not drake campana so drake bell yo no soy drake campana a lot of the news that you've been hearing well most of the news that you've uh, heard recently is entirely false and wrong I know that this has moved very quickly for you but for for me it's been a three-year thorough investigation into every false claim that that has been made. And and it's not me telling you that the claims are false, but the state of Ohio has proven uh, the claims to be false. It was reckless and irresponsible text messages. If y'all are wondering why he was speaking Spanish in the beginning of that video, it's because... He He had, like, a Mexican era. Oh, it's (laughs) about... 
Can I say that? Yes. He that. had it. We didn't. <laughs> like, I don't no, know. he but was, how he do was you saying like I was living it? in Mexico. He was making. Yeah, he was. He was. In well, his, respectfully, he, he should was not be his, saying he like if he's not. Yeah, bro. Like, but that was his. That was his Latino era. Um, my statement. My initial thoughts still stand. Like, there's no reason to be talking to a child as a grown man. Check receipts. Be intelligent. Thank you. This TikTok popped up. We're moving on. This TikTok popped up, y'all, and it was. <laughs> I don't know why people make wake up on certain days and just choose to say violence, like, messed up things. This TikToker, I don't even know. Her name is uh, looks like what J- Jahelis. She is sparking a lot of drama online because she made a video. And she basically dragged the entire cast of SNL, past and present, saying that there was no hot women on the show. Here's what she said. Am I the only person who's ever noticed that SNL has never hired a, like, hot woman? And I want to be clear, I'm not saying that every single woman who has been a cast member of SNL is ugly. It's just that none of them have ever been, like, hot. They are just kind of looks that eventually grow on you. I also feel like for humor with women, like, you have to be, for you to be considered funny, you have to be more funny than you are hot. And if you're more hot than you are funny, then it boils down to you just not being funny at all. I think that SNL is messy regardless about, like, what's going on. It doesn't matter the topic, right? Okay. Their their purpose is to be, like, a little bit messy. And okay. I think it feeds into their – I'm not saying it's right. I just think it feeds into their narrative of, like, having a really hot girl on there. This is their – this is what I think their argument is, is, like, she's right. Like, if, if you are – they think that if a girl is hot, no one's going to think she's funny. Where I don't really think that's the case. No, I don't think it is. I also don't really agree with this TikToker because, like – there have been some like fine women on SNL. Who? You go name them. Cause, well, I'm just thinking. Uh, forgets. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking you. What do you think? All right. Chloe Feynman is hot. Okay. Kristen Wiig. Okay. Cecily Strong, I think, is hot. All right. That's three. All right. Let me How look at my list. How long has SNL list. been around? A long time. Okay. Tina Fey, if you're into that, is kind of hot. Not if you're into that. Come on. Well, you know what I mean. If you have to say, if you're into that, then her point is made. Ah! I'm dead. Like, if you have to say, if that if you're into that when you're talking about a person's appearance, then no. What about Maya Rudolph? Yeah. Kind of hot. And like a... I think she's talking about the M. Rodas, like the... Uh, uh, Kate Uptons, the um, the Margot Robbies of like the pretty hot scale. Oh, you're she's saying Kristen Wiig not pretty hot? That's what she's saying. Oh, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm just trying to start shit. Like, I'm so over these people that try to start shit. No, um, I can't. I just think that she's talking about the fact that there's no really, 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 really hot, like, conventionally attractive. You know, it's fucking 24, 2024. Like, I, I don't know. You know? No, let me not be oblivious. It is a, a thing where it seems like, and I don't know if this is like a unwritten rule in Hollywood, mm-hmm. but like, you almost never see, like, smoking mm-hmm. hot comedians. And I, I think, honestly, on, like, both sides of the scale, like, I don't really know the many dudes that are, like, oh, he's so gorgeous. I mean, are there comedian dudes that are, like, other than, like, Matt Pete Rife. Pete Davidson. Like. He's ugly hot. Yeah, I was about to say, y'all was not calling Pete Davidson hot. And you know what? I'm so also over the fact that, like, it, again, it's 2024. I've said that so many times in this episode. Uh-huh. It's 2024. And you need to check it. receipts. And then also, like, it is okay to admit that, like, there's hotter people than, and then there's uglier people. That is mm-hmm. just a fact. I do not look in the mirror every day and think, oh, my God, I'm the hottest person on the planet. Like, there's just people that are, like, you know, you just have to be honest with yourself, you know? So, were there, do you know of any hot men from SNL? Pete Davidson. He's ugly hot. I think, what's Scarlett Johansson's husband? Colin. He's hot. Colin. Colin but he's Jones. also, like, so annoying that it's, like, yeah, you're hot, but, like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Eddie Murphy was on back in the day. That's when he was, like, in his he's prime. Cute. He was, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, back in the day. Again, we have to just be honest with ourselves here. This person is this we kind go, of hot. We go, other 90% of y'all are goes. Fake. <laughs> Well, everyone's fake. You know what I mean? Nowadays, it's like, no, you're beautiful. You're like just as pretty as Kate Upton. It's like, no, you're not. Like, just be honest. Okay. I think that she has a point. There is none. But I also think that they should test out like something like this. You know, people have said that about like us here. 
that we're all ugly. That we're all ugly. I've seen that. But why do they say that all the time? Why do y'all say that all the time? Like, it's come true. on. <laughs> True. Like, why do people why they look like that? And I'm like, cause we wake up at four a.m. in a freaking morning. Okay, that's also key. Like, if you if I got here at like eight, like all the rest of you are like a nine to five. Right. I wake up at four in the morning. All of us in this room. Raise your hand if you wake up four in the morning. All of us. All like, hands. that's why we're ugly. <laughs> and also, like, we're just not that conventionally hot. <laughs> we go. We just also just. We got to be honest. Like, Betsy, okay. honest. 2024. Check. 2024 is our honesty here. Check yourself. I respect that. I don't look like a model. Like, that's fine. But okay. that's what I am. All right. Well, we can't. I go and either do you. Because I was not about to drag myself down. <laughs> you know what's so annoying about Wild? Why I will literally be like, no, 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 no. Today I literally go, oh my god, like you did such a great. I won't say what. Like you did such a great job with this. Like I can't believe like how talented you are. Mm -hmm. I never do that, by the way. Like give him a compliment like that, and he goes. Mm. I don't know. I feel like you could have changed this, 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 this. I'm like, shut up. Like, <laughs> God, could it kill you? I so just shut that, up. Though. Like, shut up. Take a compliment. Sit down. Be quiet. Go think stuff. You, you just call me ugly. Now you tell me to take a compliment. What am I? I guess I'm ugly and when talented. The compliments you come, when the compliments come, <laughs> take them. You know what I mean? Ain't like, oh, she want to get off your chest before we leave out of here. Meanwhile, sitting across from each other has become a problem because I think that I stand up to talk to you now and like you bark and sit down. So you'll be like, Steph, Steph, Steph. And then I have to stand up and look at you. Branson, do you agree? Branson's our associate producer. He sits next to us. He doesn't have a mic, but Branson does not agree. He agrees. He um, said yes. <laughs> all right. Well, that's not what I was asking. I thought you had any actual news to talk about. I'm really excited for Gypsy and like whatever she chooses, I support. Uh, Stephanie and I are going to Coachella next yes. week. So if y'all are also going to Coachella, yes. and y'all know... And if you want to hang out with us, I'm down. Okay. Right? Yeah, we down. Stranger danger. I can't die if you're there. Uh, like, right. I wouldn't meet up with a stranger on the internet by myself, but if yeah, you're there... Yeah, no. Okay, you know yeah, what I mean? right. You get... Kill us both. You get two two bodies for the price of... Uh, Coachella? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. We're getting out of here, y'all. Bye, guys. See y'all next week. <laughs>